everyone, this is Jeff Kramowski with the Herd Book Ag Media giving you your Moving Iron Ag News update for this next week in March. Right now, the USDA is focusing on fertilizer markets, as turbulent as they are, hoping to spur some more domestic production while still allowing there to be a decent amount of competition in the market. In fact, Secretary at, at Secretary of Agriculture uh, Tom Vilzik mentioned during the Commodity Classic that right now the department is going to invest and inquire into the fertilizer industry. For one thing, there's going to be a new grant program in place that will use $250 million in the Commodity Credit Corporation funds to allow to um, finance new independent and otherwise domestic fertilizer production, kind of hoping to boost that section of the industry, especially as we can't rely on a lot of exports right now. Um, they're also saying that the USDA is going to also look into dealing with the rising costs and lack of competition we have as we are so heavily reliant on uh, imports and really not a lot of exports. Moving on now to some international news. Um, Ukraine has now stopped their exportations of fertilizer while we're on that topic, which kind of makes our global fertilizer situation even more turbulent. Now over in Argentina, they have finally seen a little bit of rain, but it is much too late to have much effect on the soybean harvest um, as the region suffered heavily throughout most of the drought. And now that they have the rain, it's not much of a difference. Along the Ivory Coast, there is going to be an implement implementation of a new traceability system that is supposed to pro inform cocoa producers and cocoa consum consumers of their exact origin and the production conditions of cocoa beans. As you know, the cocoa industry has a long time suffered with issues regarding um, sustainability and also child labor and human rights. Now, this is a significant uh, move because the Ivory Coast, as controversial as it is, is still a major cocoa export supplier, covering over 40% of all global exports, and they have heard the harsh criticism. Tracking the beans from the beginning all the way until they are stored and then sold to processors, uh, people are saying there is going to hopefully help amend some of those issues and enforce a lot of the producers and other companies involved to abide by a much higher ethical standard. And while we're on the subject of chocolate, right now we have a global de de deficit for sugar from the year 2021 to 22, and that's projected to be at 1.1 million tons despite India having a pretty good uh, sugar year. Now coming back to some of our national news, uh, the Smithfield packing, plant, packing Company and its union agreed to a brand new contract that is going to guarantee an immediate $2 an hour raise for their employees, followed by annual increases and some additional worker protections, uh, specifically against poor working conditions and unfair pay, pay rates. In California, the strawberry harvest is up over the projected total for 2022, uh, up across 6% through the entire state. Recently, a USDA employee was arrested for allegedly accepting cash to allow uh, tick and disease infested cattle enter the United States over the Texas border. Um, and this was done to surpass the normal rigorous inspection and quarantine protocol. And now as more people are getting back in the field and spring goes on, there is still a lot of discussion and debate over the right to repair issues. You may remember in last July, the Biden administration issued an executive order that would require the Federal Trade Commission to investigate and take action on un unfair and anti-competitive restrictions, quote, unquote. Now, just recently, the National Farmers Union issued a new complaint with the FTC and followed by at least six class action lawsuits uh, that are going to be going through the courts. As you can imagine, one of the current targets of this is John Deere, which has been happening, uh, which has been kind of at the circle of a lot of these of right to repair issues, though other companies have also been criticized. Um, John Deere is significant as they hold about half of all the large, tr large tractor, farm machinery, and combine markets. Um, and they people are arguing they're violating the Sherman Antitrust Act to 
by selling equipment that absolutely requires farmers to go through their company um, due to all the proprietaries they have on their software and so forth. So this is going to keep going on, um, but a lot of politicians are saying that they are going to stand on the side of the farmers with the right to repair. But uh, unfortunately, this whole issue is still going to be in limbo for the near future, but we'll keep an eye on that throughout the summer. That should catch you up for this week. This Ag News Update is brought to you by the Herdbook Ag Media, serving all your agribusiness writing, communication, and media needs. Find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or our company website, the-herdbook.com. Let me know you found out about us here in Moving Iron and get 20% off your first invoice.